Please like if you find this video helpful. If a business is to be successful, it must establish and maintain competitive advantage. Performance management is used to measure, control and improve the performance of an organisation. This can be achieved using strategic planning and control. Strategic planning is an organization's objectives and strategies. Objectives is where an organization wants to be and strategies is how an organization intends to get there. Objectives set by an organization should be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time related. Objectives should be specific, so everyone knows what they are working towards. Objectives should be measurable. With business, what gets measured gets done. Objectives need to be achievable. They can be inspirational, but not unachievable. If employees believe an objective is unachievable, they will give up trying to achieve that objective. Objectives need to be relevant to the organization as a whole and to the people whom they are given. The person responsible for the objective must be able to influence the outcome of the objective. And objectives need to be time related. They can be long term or short term, but must be time limited for measurement. When evaluating strategic plans, management must take into account are plans suitable, acceptable and feasible. Suitability. Does the strategy have a strategic fit with the organisation? Acceptability. Is the strategy acceptable to the organization's stakeholders? And feasibility. Does the organization have the necessary resources and competencies or can these be put in place? With performance management, controls are used to monitor the achievement of objectives and to feed back any corrective action needed, so as to keep an organisation aligned to its strategic objectives. Management control is the tactics by which managers assure that resources are obtained and used efficiently in the accomplishment of strategic objectives. Operational control is the process of ensuring that specific tasks are carried out effectively and efficiently. It would be difficult for an organisation to monitor the achievement of objectives if adequate controls are not put in place. Performance management is used to improve an organisation's performance and to ensure objectives are managed and met. The performance pyramid can be used as a great visual aid for displaying the different levels of performance management and their different focus. Each of these levels need to support and be coordinated with each other. The performance hierarchy requires horizontal and vertical alignment. So any conflicts among objectives need to be addressed. For example, profit versus environmental concerns. Objectives need to be translated from top down and measured from bottom up. Mission statement. This is the general broad aim of an organization. It's an organization's purpose, position, values, culture, and ethics. Mission statements are set by senior level management and should be succinct, memorable, enduring, a guide to employees and addressed to stakeholders. Succinct. 
mission statements tend to be qualitative in nature and expressed in a few words. Memorable. Mission statements should be worth remembering. Enduring. By this we mean the mission statement should not change unless the organisation's mission changes. A guide for employees to work towards and it should also be addressed to a number of stakeholders. The advantages of a mission statement is that it provides direction for an organisation, assisting in the formulation of acceptable strategies. It can be used to resolve conflicts among different stakeholder groups and as a framework for decision making in that the mission statement can be used to assess the suitability of any proposed plans. Mission statements can be used to guide and communicate the organisation's culture to stakeholders. And it can help prevent potential misunderstandings of the organisation's reason for being. The disadvantages of a mission statement is that they can be vague and unclear. They may be unrealistic and therefore valueless. They may be inconsistent and conflict with organisational objectives set. And they may have very little external focus, possibly seen as simply used for PR purposes only. Mission statements are set by senior management. They are the high level values of the organisation. An organisation's purpose, strategy, position, value, culture and ethics. They tend to be non-quantitative statements in that they do not reference money or quantities. So how does an organisation know if they have achieved the mission? This is where organisations use strategic plans and objectives. When reviewing performance of an organisation, the management accountant should always keep the overall mission of the organisation in mind. How is the performance of the organisation with regards to its mission? Are the measurements used in reviewing the performance of the organisation suitable to assess the achievement of the organisation's mission? Strategic plans and objectives. Strategic plans and objectives need to be aligned with the organization's mission statement. They should identify where an organization wants to be and how it will get there. Strategic planning and control is long-term planning which considers the whole of the organization. For example, what new products to launch or what new markets to develop. It matches an organization's activities to the external environment, identifying future requirements and matching that to resources and capabilities. With strategic plans and objectives, there is a high degree of uncertainty. Organisations should have controls in place to monitor strategies to see how well objectives are being met and to recommend corrective action if required. This sort of planning, together with the decision-making process involved, will be done at board level and tends to be more outline planning rather than detailed planning. Tactical and operational plans and objectives are more specific objectives. They are concerned with the management and use of existing assets, resources and capabilities. Tactical plans and objectives need to be aligned to strategic plans and objectives. Tactical planning is more detailed, short-term planning. For example, the one-year budget. It is used to ensure resources are obtained and used effectively to achieve the long-term plans of the company. For example, how many staff will a company need next year? Operational plans are day-to-day -day plans for the running of the company given the existing strategic direction. They are used to ensure specific tasks 
are carried out effectively and efficiently. For example, ensuring that budgeted production is achieved each day. Operational plans do not tend to change an organization's strategy. Operational planning and control is short-term planning and control, which is unlikely to involve major elements of uncertainty. The rational model of strategic planning takes a rational approach. It looks at planning as a series of steps, starting with the vision being set, and finishes with the measure and review of performance against the set vision. In order to achieve suitable competitive advantage, an organization must set strategies that highlight where an organization will compete and how an organization will compete. The rational model describes strategic planning as a three stage process strategic analysis, strategic choice, and strategic implementation. Strategic analysis, such as SWOT analysis, stakeholder analysis, and gap analysis. Strategic choice, such as strategies to close performance gaps. Competitive strategies for business units. Direction of growth, which products and markets an organization should invest in. Whether expansion should be achieved through organic growth, acquisition or some form of joint arrangement. And strategic implementation. This is the formulation of detailed plans and budgets, targets setting for key performance indicators, monitoring and control. As mentioned, objectives should be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time related. Corporate objectives are objectives that cover the whole of the organization and focus on the desired performance of the organization. The strategic analysis process will generate a range of corporate objectives, for example, the maximization of shareholders' wealth, maximization of sales, growth, survival, research and development targets, and so forth. 